Hold on, Carlo, hold on. Tony! Ah! So many Shambas to shape. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice. While learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Caro, just look, look at this beautiful view, you know, the landscape. Fresh fruits straight from the Shamba. Ah, uh, Tony, retirement is good. I just think of the good old days when we used to shape up the farmers and their shambas, making them even better farmers. Mm. We taught a lot and equally learned a lot. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. Hello, Tony. It's time to shamba shape up. Mm. Oh, well. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to, to shamba, shamba shape, shape up. up. This week we are in Dondori in Nyandarwa County. My name is Anwa Boi Mwangi. I'm 26 years old. My name is David Mwangi Mwangi, 32 years old. Uh, do we have one child? I have been farming for four years now. Farming cabbages, potatoes, sometimes we even plant miji and cows. We have quite challenges, but when I hear that Shaba Shape Up is coming to my home, I knew that I will be shaped to do farming as a business. <laughs> hello, hello. Yes. Come on, we come are on. Here. Hello, Anne. Hi. Hi. How are you? How are you? Good. Fine. Yes, yes. Mr. Tony. Yes, How are you? David. Fine. Good, fine. good. Yes. So, where is Victor? Oh, yeah. Ah, here you are. How are you? Ah, it's <laughs> so to tiny. Mommy. Go to mommy. Mm, mm, all right. So, Carol. Yes. What has impressed you about our farmers? Tony, just look at them. Hmm? Very young. It is very nice to see young farmers. Yes. yes. As a couple, you enjoy farming. Yes, we do enjoy. Mm -hmm. We want to hear what challenges are you facing. Mm -hmm. We want to do farming as a business. Mm -hmm. But there are challenges that we do face when we do farming. Yes. And if we can get an idea how to make it better, mm -hmm. you'd be quite mm -hmm. well. Shamba Shape Up is here. Right. Uh, we always make sure once we leave the Shamba, mm -hmm. we leave you fully shaped up. So, so let's go pitch up our tent. And get to work. We'll see you in a bit, all right? right. Yes. Okay. okay, see you. We'll see you in a bit. Okay. Thank you. All right, all right. Uh, when I heard Shamba Shape Up is coming here, I was very happy. On the other hand, I was afraid because some friend of mine told me, wow, we will see you on a television. I was afraid. In order to get the most from your farm, you must know the conditions of your soils. And that means a soil test. David wants to plant more potatoes. Samuel from Crop Nuts visited David's farm a few days ago and collected soil samples. He then sent this to the Crop Nuts lab, where they test the sample and send you the results. Samples should be collected in a zigzag pattern for best results. Now, Samuel is here with the results. As you can see from the report, mm -hmm. uh, the level of acidity from your soil indicated by pH was very low, and this one can affect the availability of the nutrients. Okay. Yes, so that's why we recommend you to correct the acidity mm -hmm. before you you can uh, proceed to do planting. Okay. As you can see also the levels of calcium from mm. your soils are very low. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for you to increase them, mm -hmm. we recommend you to apply calcitic lime. All right. Calcitic lime is a product that has calcium in it, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's needed by the crop. Okay. We've recommended that you use uh, mm -hmm. 1.2 mm -hmm. tons per acre. Okay. Available phosphorus was okay. also very low. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing planting, we have recommended you to use DAP, mm -hmm. 95 kg uh -huh. per acre. If I do all this, mm. what am I going to get. When you apply them timely, mm -hmm. we expect you to get 300 mm -hmm. uh, bags okay. of 50 kg okay. per acre. Wow. Yes. David gets 150 kilogram bags of potatoes per acre. 
But the crop nuts expert advises a potential of 350 kilogram bags. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you too. Okay. As a farmer, you have to diversify. Have many activities on the farm. Keeping animals is a good way to add to crop farming. With both crops and livestock on this farm, David is already on his way to managing the risk of climate change. Let's see how we can help him do better with his farm. And to start him off on his journey, we invited Kanye from CKL Africa. Now, Kanye, from your general observation, how can we improve David's cows? One thing that I have observed is that where the heifers are sleeping, it is uh, Monday. Mm -hmm. And so when you bring up the heifers, they will not give you enough milk because the place they are, they are sleeping on is not comfortable. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to have the cows comfort first for it to be comfortable and to chew the cud. So for now, what are you doing with your cows to make sure that you are a good dairy farmer? I'm just giving them a green matters. Green matter only? And waters, nothing else. How about salt? Do you give your cows salt? Uh, I don't give. At all, at all? At all. When you give a lot of green matter, mm -hmm. you find the cows, one, they might diarrhea. Okay. Yeah? And when the cow diarrheas, then what happens later is dehydration. Mm -hmm. Then it loses a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. So the cow or the heifer will retard in growth. Mm -hmm. And also she will not come uh, on heat at the right time. Mm -hmm. And we want to get a heifer, mm -hmm. the first conception at 15 months. And also the first conception to be at around 300 to 350 kgs. So you have to provide very good quality fodder. How should farmers take care of their cows when it comes to nutrition? You are supposed to get a very good balanced diet, which comprises of carbohydrates, uh, vitamins, it comprises of proteins, minerals and water. And uh, if I can start with water because you are not providing water. Sure. You are supposed to provide water ad lib or free choice. Mm -hmm. So the water should be around where the heifers are mm -hmm. so that they so can they should take be water they throughout. Should be watered throughout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then also you are supposed to get very good nepia, uh, which is around one meter tall. Mm -hmm. Then you make sure that you wilt that nepia. You can cut now. Then you feed your cows uh, later, even after three days. Mm -hmm. And you are not supposed to dry it at the sun. Mm -hmm. Just put it at the shade, mm -hmm. then it dries, then you give it to your animals. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then if not nepia, then you get silage mm -hmm. from the maize. Mm -hmm. Then if not silage, you get very good quality hay. Mm -hmm. So from there, then you are supposed to do the supplementation. Mm -hmm. So for the proteins, you provide Cupacula Advanced. Mm -hmm. And this you provide together with the dairy meal. Mm -hmm. Our heifers should take 0 0.5 kg of dairy meal mm -hmm. mixed with a hard food of Cupacula Advanced. Mm -hmm. It is going to help the heifer mm -hmm. to grow healthy, mm -hmm. to build up the body, and also to put very good reserves mm -hmm. of, uh, of milk when she calves down. Okay. Then, mm -hmm. besides that, the heifer requires the calcium, it requires phosphorus mm -hmm. to build up the bones, the structure, mm -hmm. as you can see, mm -hmm. so that she can be able to add more weight. Okay. And also, the mineral salts help the heifer mm -hmm. to come on heat at the right time. And uh, for the heifers, mm -hmm. you provide Maclic Plus okay. mm -hmm. at the rate of 100 grams, which is four to five tablespoons full. Mm -hmm. So that is how you manage the cow nutritionally. Mm -hmm. By this doing, we are sure that our heifer mm -hmm. is now ready to be bred. Mm -hmm. Did you understand that? Okay, let's get down to the details. To feed your cows well, give either well-wilted green matter such as napier, silage, or good quality hay. For the supplements, give a handful of Cooper Cooler Advanced and four to five tablespoons full of Maclic Plus in half a kilo of dairy meal per cow per day. This will ensure your heifer comes on heat at 15 months rather than 2 years and at around 350 kilos in weight. There is a risk of losing up to 9 months of milk revenue if you do not feed your heifer well in preparation for calving and milk production. As you have said, there is a lot of work for us to do to start our farmer on the journey to become a good Dairy farmer. Sure. Yeah. Are you ready? Kabisa. Can you? Yes. Let's start building. Let's do it.
David and Anne had started building for their cows, but got stuck. But not to worry, Shamba Shepherd is here. Without proper financial planning as a farmer, you're preparing to fail. It is important to turn your farm into a business. Anna! Yes? You're already making profit from your produce? Yes, I'm selling my cabbages. You are serious about making farming yes. a business? Yes, I'm serious. Are you I sure? I to make money. <laughs> All right, then I have the right person who is going to help you do exactly that. Thank All right? Yeah. Just give me some time. Turning a farm into a profitable business will need a financial advisor. And that is why we brought in Diba, a financial expert from Ilri, to talk to Anne. Maybe, Anne, if you can tell us what you're farming. I, I do farm cabbages, potatoes, and I also have cows, which is, in the future, I'll be milking, but for now, I'm not milking. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how are you making your money or how are you making your profit? I make my money through, when I sell those cabbages and potatoes, I earn and I am able to make profit from them. Okay. Yeah. So how many times do you harvest in a year? Three times. Three times. Yeah. Yeah. And you make good money? Yeah. About yeah. how much? Season, I can, in cabbages, I get 60. 60,000? Yes. Wow. Okay, that is like three months. Yeah. So Diba, our farmer really wants to improve on that. So how can she go about this? Uh, and um, are you keeping records of your farm produce? The way I calculate my profit, uh -huh. I do, I will calculate from uh, when I buy the price that I have used, and then I will subtract from what I have get from what I have sell, and I will see whether I have make a profit or not. Okay. The best practice is to write down, you know, we are humans, we keep forgetting things, yes. and uh, maybe things of yesterday you have forgotten. It's best to record everything. If, for example, sales of cabbage, how much do you earn from the cabbage? And then what are the expenses? How much are you, you know, giving out in terms of your expenses? Mm -hmm. So it's good that will guide her how much she makes out of the sales of cabbage. That is what we call profit. Mm -hmm. And that will also inform her to save uh, maybe properly. Uh, if she looks at her records, they, maybe she'll say, I, didn't, I don't need to spend here. I could have cut this much. I can put aside this money to go into maybe buy another cow or um, uh, expand a farm. So uh, Deepa, it seems record keeping is very important for a farmer to, to make a step further. When you say record keeping, what exactly do we mean? I think to demonstrate that um, this is an uh, uh, example of good uh, record keeping. The dates are here. You also write a month up here. Then the description of the anything that comes in as an income and then the amount. When you sell cabbage, uh, that is an income for you. Yeah. You write a debt, cabbage here, and then amount of that sales. Um, if it's uh, expenses, something like specific, say anything that you buy that you spend in your farm. So you write a date that you bought the pesticide mm. and the description is the pesticide and then the amount you use to purchase that pesticide. Mm -hmm. The laborers you are paying out, so it's come as an expense. You also have a separate page for each produce. If it is cabbage, if it is potato or anything else in your farm. When you are looking at your financial records, it can guide you which produce making good money which produce you need to improve on. So that for that reason, it's, it's good to have a separate page. So here is your record book. Thank With the you. advice that Diba has given, I'm sure you're going to be fine. Thank you. All right. If you'd like to get a record book and turn your farm into a business, get in touch with I Shamba. I know it will help me to be a good farmer and also to know whether I'm getting losses or profit. As Anne builds up her financial knowledge, Kamau is busy building up the cow shed.
Welcome to the Shamba Shepherd Farming News for Kenya. In the coming week, we expect moderate to heavy rainfall across most parts of the country. North, Upper and Lower Eastern will see moderate to high rains in the coming week. This includes Mandera, Wajia, Meru, Taraka, Kitui, Makweni and Kajado. Total rains across the week will be between 15 mm to as high as 235 mm in these regions. The coastal region including Tana River, Lamu, Kilifi, Mombasa, Kwale and Taita Taveta will get little to moderate daily rains. The region will get 25 to 235 mm of rains across the week with an exception of Tana River and Taita Taveta which might see between 5 to 50 millimeters of total rains. Central Kenya cutting across Lake Kipia, Nyandarua, Nyeri, Moranga to Kirinyaga as well as Nairobi and Kiambu counties will receive high levels of rains ranging between 75 to 235 millimeters across the week. The north, central and south Rift Valley too will see good levels of rains in the coming week. This includes counties such as Tukana, Transoia, Wasingishu, Samburu, Kericho, Nakuru and Narok with total rains of between 75 to 235 millimeters. The western and Nyanza regions, which include counties of Busia, Bungoma, Kakamega, Vihiga, Siaya, Kisumu, Homa Bay, Nyamira, Kisi, and Miguri, are also expecting high amounts of rains, ranging between 50 to 235 millimeters over the course of the week. Farmers, remove weeds as they take up food, space, water, and light meant for your crops and also act as hiding places for pests and diseases. Top dress once the farm is clear of weeds. For maize, you can top dress when they are at knee height. Use nitrogenous fertilizers like CAN. Check your crops frequently for pests such as armyworms and control them right away. Plant fodder for your animals this season. Consider planting fodder like Caliandra, Boma Roads, and Napier. If you're in the dry and arid areas, plant drought-tolerant fodder grass like Maasai Love Grass and African Foxtail Grasses, among others. For more farming tips and information, get in touch with iShamba on 0711-082-606. I am Brenda. See you next week on the Shamba Sheba Farming News for Kenya. Coming up after the break. We take a look at this region's main cash crop, potatoes and help the farmers discover a quicker, cheaper way to cook their meals. Welcome back to Shamba Shepa. Coming up, we make a scrumptious meal and ensure farmers get a bumper potato harvest. Pests and diseases can cause huge losses to a farmer. It is important that you as a farmer know how to protect yourself. The main cash crop for David and Anne is potatoes. To ensure they make some money this season, we have called Emmanuel Langat, a crop expert, to help them with a recurring problem. So David, how big is this piece of land here? Uh, uh, a quarter acre. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how, how much do you harvest from this quarter of an acre? For the first season, I harvest 30 bags. Then the next harvest? Uh, 15 bags. It was almost slashed halfway. Yeah, halfway. Why? What happened? What we think here, it is like when weather change, in here we call it that when that comes. Explain to me what is that? Oh, I, I seem to have heard of it somewhere. Well, it it start changing, uh, and it has black spots, so, like, like some the, burning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it look like this? Sure. Ah. Okay. Mm. Ah. This is what you're talking about. Yes. So, Emmanuel, what is this? This is a late blight of potatoes. Mm -hmm. So basically, late blight uh, normally attacks plants of this family, potato like, like, even blight. tomatoes. So this one is a potato blight oh. because mm -hmm. it is late blight of potatoes. Mm -hmm. Most of the farmers believe it is cold, burning the, the plant, but uh, blight is the fungi that attacks the plant. It is dispersed by air from infected plants. When they come into contact with the plant, it becomes now the disease. Cold is one of the uh, conditions uh, necessary for fungi to establish itself on the leaf surface. So when there is a lot of humidity in the environment and there is, the temperatures are low, that is where now the blight uh, occurs. I didn't know that. That is good information. 
as we know, the purpose of the leaf is to manufacture the food for the plant. So once the disease is there, it reduces the surface area. And that means it will impact or it will affect the, the yield. So it is essential for the farmer to control the disease at early stage. Okay. So mm -hmm. apart from uh, late blight attacking the leaves, mm -hmm. it can also uh, attack the, the, the stem. Okay. And you can, you can even see from this one mm -hmm. the level of damage. So that means uh, the growth of this plant will be affected definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So David, yes. having noticed this in your shamba, mm -hmm. what do you do about it? There is a time when we use the, uh, the urine of rabbits. Rabbit's urine? Yeah. Then if that's not working, mm -hmm. you hope for the best. Yeah. Oh. So, Emmanuel, yes. what would you advise our farmers to do? For us, we recommend the farmers to do the control of the diseases preventatively. That is before the disease comes in. And for us, we have products we recommend. And one of them is Ridomil Gold. And this one is, uh, it has both curative action. It can cure the already uh, present disease in the plant tissues okay. or it can prevent mm -hmm. the disease from coming in. Two weeks after germination, apply Ridomil Gold on the plants at the rate of 50 grams per 20 liter knapsack. And after 14 days, you can now alternate with another product that is Revus. Mm -hmm. It is a strong product on late blight control. Two weeks after the first spray, apply Revus at the rate of 20 milliliters to 20 liters of water. Mm -hmm. So what we recommend is to alternate them. Mm -hmm. And the other advantage of doing the alternation of the products is to minimize or to control resistance of diseases towards the products. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what are we spraying today? So from the scouting I've done, I've realized that the disease is now coming in. So Today we are going to spray little milk gold at the rate of 50 grams per 20 liter. Remember, when using fungicides, always wear protective clothing. Spray when the weather is clear, in the morning or in the afternoon. Ensure all the leaves are sprayed. In next season, I'm going to get more, more potatoes. I think I'm going to be a good potato farmer. Meanwhile, Kamau is putting some finishing touches onto the cow shed. Time, energy and money. Three things that we need to save on to be better farmers. There are challenges which we do face because as a young mother, I have to care for my kid and I also I want to go to the farming. Sometimes I have to leave my farming job and go find firewood very far. Anne needs a quicker and cheaper way to make meals so she can find time for her family and farming as well. So we called in Francis Gitonga from SCODE to bring in a cooker that will solve her problems. The problem which I have is time, because, because I use firewood, which is also a challenge to get because I get it very far mm -hmm. from here. So I have to stop my farming job. So, so that you can go so get I can it. Get, yeah. So if I can get something which will enable me to save time, that's the better. That's better. So, uh, Francis, maybe you'll tell us about what we have today. Uh, what uh, we have for today is a pressure cooker. It uses electricity. It consumes less in terms of consumption in electricity. And you cook faster. Mm -hmm. And it's, it is clean. Mm -hmm. And you're using it, yeah. When you say uh, it consumes less, yes. Or what do you mean? Mm -hmm. When you cook githeri, how much time you use to cook githeri? If I have put it in the morning, yes. mm -hmm. I cannot eat raj, I will eat it supper. In the evening? In the, in the evening. evening. Mm. That time, and uh, you have like two, two works at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because you will come every 30 minutes or 15 minutes to put the, the firewood. But when you have this one, <coughs> you only set your time for five minutes when cooking githeri. Wow, yes. that is better because yeah. we are used. If you can have from morning to six, those are around three, eight, eight, eight hours. hours. Mm. 
and I can see this is time saving, not like firewood, so it is a good thing. Oh. Yes, and the another features, you can delay what you want to cook until the time you want to start cooking. You can set it, you put it in the electricity, then you go to your jobs, you just put a delay time, the time you want to start to cook. If you are coming back from Shamba at around 5, you can start cooking at 3. Then when you come, the food is ready, still warm. You still keep that food warm for 8 hours. Uh -huh. yes. That is good because yes. I will get a fresh thing. Uh -huh. yes. You see, this is like somebody else working for you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You can be doing other things and mm. it's also doing work for you. You yeah. like that? Yeah. So any, any question, Anne? What else can I cook with? Yes, you can bake with it, you can fry, even your girl you can cook with it. That one I have to see. I think it's time to make some lunch using the electric pressure cooker. Remember, it's easy to maintain. When cooking ugali, boil water. Stir in the flour to cook it for a bit. Cover and put on the bake option. We leave it like uh, 10 minutes. We cannot eat ugali by itself. I have a kienyeji hen. Ah! We'll eat with ugali. Kienyeji chicken? Yes. You are the one. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> to cook the chicken stew, Use the sauté function to cook your onions. Add your tomatoes, capsicum, salt, chicken, then mix and cover. Select the chicken or meat function and in 10 minutes, your meal will be ready. The cooker is amazing and it is good. It will help me when I cook a very and then I go to the shaba. I will not be coming back to add Firewood as I used to do. Yes, I'm happy. A few minutes and we all enjoyed our lunch having used just half a unit of electricity, which is about 10 shillings. That cooker is amazing. Finally, the cow shed was done. So we added clean water and mixed the supplements from CKL Africa. A handful of Cooper Cooler Advanced and four tablespoons of Maclick Plus with half a kilo of dairy meal according to Kanye's instructions. Then we brought one of the cows in to have a feel. Looks like she loves it here. David and Dan. Yes. What do you think about your cattle shed? This is a good start. And I see in the future it will be the best daily farming. Wow, it is amazing. You look happy, Anne. Yes. And David too. Yes. And so, he's a hay farmer. When you come back, you'll find me a better farmer. And with that, we leave David and Anne well on their way to being better farmers, with better record keeping and better meals.